Welcome to Let's Talk Possibility. Tonight we are talking about how to adapt, improvise and overcome a stroke with George and Stefano. Thank you for listening. Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Talk Possibility. Tonight I have with me George Scola and his brother Stefano. And we are going to be talking about what's possible after experiencing a major physical setback in your life. We also have Tim, our producer, here. And for those of you that I don't know, I'm Talana. So welcome, guys. It's so nice having you in the studio. Thank um, you. As I said earlier, it's a pity Jack couldn't be here. Jack, unfortunately, is, is not well, so he's, he's staying at home and resting so that he can be here for, for the next show. And yeah, he sends his regards. It's his Thank you. But yeah, it's awesome to have you here. So yeah, we wanted to, to get in the show to really um, talk a bit about, as I said, what, hap what happens after we've experienced a trauma, and specifically one that, that affects our body so, so much, because it is something that a, a lot of people do, do experience. And just going to you, I mean, you've been in the corporate world, you've, you've done yeah. you know, the, the business thing with <laughs> sitting around boardrooms, you've been in entrepreneur, um, what else? You've been a sportsman. I know you got colours for for sports. You've been very involved with that. And you're a motorbike adventure. <laughs> That's my passion. Yeah. So it's so all those things. And then something happened when you were 37, and you know, by 2008, you suffered from a stroke. That's right. Oh, what was that like? <laughs> um. Well, firstly, it's completely painless. So that's a that's a good side. Um, I was it was a Saturday morning. <clears throat> I was busy moving home. Um, a friend a friend of mine was helping me, and my wife. And uh, I just carried out two couches, and I was walking back, and I started feeling a bit dizzy. So I leaned up against the wall, and uh, and then I thought, okay, let me just drop down. Um, into a squat position and then from there I thought I can let me I'll sit on my butt so I'll kick my leg out but I, c I couldn't move my leg mm. so I thought that's a bit odd and yeah ah, it's okay I'll, I'll use my arms my arm wouldn't move and uh, yeah that's when you start wondering what's going on um, I never knew what a stroke was um, before that I always thought it was something to do with your heart. Yeah. Um, so I had no idea what was happening to me. Um, my friend came over to me, to my aid, and uh, I remember sitting there and looking up at him, and he was speaking to me, and I understood everything he was saying. And then when I tried to answer, it was like, bro, 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 bro. You know when you hear something and you think, no, wait, that didn't sound no, right. right. Yeah. Okay, let me try again. Right, right, right. And you think, um, that's also not right. Um, fortunately, he knew you know, what was happening. And uh, he went and called my wife. She came down and she ran off and got the doctor because I don't, I don't live far from, from the doc, luckily. The doc came up and uh, ran some tests. And yeah, they called the paramedics, and I was in hospital within 45 minutes. And then from there, they said, uh, the problem with a stroke, there's two types of strokes. Yeah. Um, one is a, a hemorrhage, where uh, a nerve uh, bleeds, and the other one is a clot. And both have the same result. They both block out a part of the brain that doesn't get oxygen in and that's where the damage is done yeah um so they need to find out what caused the clot was it a clot or was it a bleed yeah um and then they can treat that but now the medication that they have to give you they have to ensure that it is a clot because if it's a, a hemorrhage it'll just assist and and speed up the hemorrhage so mm. you could die just yet, they're very different. Yeah, totally different. different drugs that um, 
and you know the doctors put that forward to us and um, I said whatever just give it to me you know and my wife said hang on a second you know we don't know what's going to happen you could die I said well you know what are the chances give me give me eight out of, give me a number out of ten um, anyway I, I had a clot so they gave me the 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 TPA and um, and Joe. Um, so, so it happened when you were very young. A lot of people say, like, like thirty-seven. It's, it's something that I always thought was was happens to like much older people. And that is it. That's right. That's that's pretty much the general um, stereotype that's out there. Yeah, you have a stroke when you're in your sixties and seventies, and then, uh, well, yeah, you're almost at that age. So, so what? But um, it's ha- happening younger and younger. Um, mm. uh, Children are born, and they have a stroke. Now, wow. uh, that's that's an interesting dynamic because you didn't know what it was like to to have the use of both arms or both legs. So, in a way, you kind of at an advantage because that's where you grew up only using one side. But when you have use of your body, and then all of a sudden, from one second to the next. You lose that. That's that's the hardest thing to mm. to overcome. Um, yeah, you know, and I, I don't mean to be rude, but you know, wiping your bottom, you take kind of take that for granted, <laughs> and yeah. all of a sudden now you've got to learn to do that. You've got to learn to tie your shoelace with one hand. Mm-hmm. That you learn that at age two, three. Yeah, so, th- so basic so things. basic things in life yeah. are, are hugely impacted, and, and and that's the hardest barrier to overcome. Um, I've always said that I feel that you only start recovering when you actually accept what's happened, because until you mm. accept it, you're still fighting. Okay, and you live in hope. Uh, okay, tomorrow I wake up and I'll, I'll be fine. It's not going to happen. You know, and then the doctor says, you've only got, you know, what, whatever you don't recover in six months, well, you'll never recover again. No, crap. I don't believe that. Okay, you can't restrict a person like that. Because uh, yeah. each person recovers in their own time frame. And, and probably with, with how much they accept it where they are and then what they, they, they tend to do that so yeah so, sure so it had a, a huge impact on your life absolutely and and I know your your relationships as well um, unfortunately within eight months after the after the stroke I um, I lost my business well lost is a strong word I shut down the business um, and my marriage fell apart as well um, mm. you see we, in most traumas, you always look at the, the the victim, okay? But behind the victim, there's a family. There's a support structure. Actually, yeah. Nobody really looks into that. And you know, how does it affect them? Well, and, well let's ask. We've yeah, got, yes, got my brother. Stefano, your, your brother, in the, in the studio. Well, so <clears> when is, we got the call late Saturday morning, it was a shock. Mm. Um, and like he says, we didn't know what it meant, you know. Um, um, the problem was explaining it to my mom. So we, we, we took her out for lunch and we, we tried to explain it to her and she, straight away, she, she accepted it, but she didn't know what was going on. Um, and we couldn't speak to him because he, he, he couldn't put two words together and every second word was a swear word. And the, it was a, <laughs> can't say that. <laughs> no, it was probably a frustration on his yeah. side that he couldn't exp- explain himself and express mm. himself. As you so, said, from having been able to, to all of a sudden you've lost so many of your, uh, that we take for granted, our natural exactly. abilities. Exactly. I lost, I lost speech for five days. Sure. Um, so it's yeah, very frustrating. So you've got someone you can't talk to. You, know, you, know, you, you, you need know to get happening. information and you speak to others and they, they can't exactly explain what he's going through because you know, nobody's been through it. You know, you, we had friends of ours that were doctors in this and they say, yeah, he's got a damage to the brain, but explain what's happened. Um, and uh, due to uh, circumstances, we only flew in to Cape Town, I think, four days later. Uh, he had his mates around, and they said, look, don't rush down because there's nothing you can do. 
Um, and it was a bit of a shock when we saw him lying in the bed. And like I repeat again, he was, you know, every second word and it was a swear word. And he, he, it was frustration. You could see he wants to express himself and having an Italian background, you know, you try to speak with your hands. <laughs> so his one hand's going ballistic and the other one's lying there. He's not doing anything. No. Um, and and you 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 get this this feeling of, of, of loss, of not knowing what to do, how to help. And then helping, uh, he needs to drink, get the glass, give him the glass with the one hand, with a straw at the top. Um, and every, we stayed for, I think we stayed down in Cape Town for a week. Um, and uh, every day we saw him, he was getting better and better and better. Um, but also the doctor had said to us, look, he doesn't think that he's ever going to be back to normal. Uh, which is something that you don't want to take, you don't want to believe. Yeah. You know, because you, you see other situations and you believe that the body can, and it does adjust itself. It does fix itself up. And it is but amazing. you don't know the damage that was created. Yeah, it is amazing what, what the body is. So if, if anyone is listening in, um, you're welcome to ask George and Stefano some questions on the, on the chat. We'd love to, to hear from you. But I had um, a, a bit of a question because I know from that, and I think it's, it's part of if you saying like your, your struggle in, in not knowing what to do and what to expect, and no one knows, no one could give you the information, yeah. is that I know you've actually co-founded a foundation specifically for this need because there is such a gap. Tell um, us about that. About a year after the stroke. Um, yeah, obviously you go through a lot of emotion. And, mm. you know, you, it's, you kind of need healing. You need to find answers. And um, I, f I was phoning around to, to try and find people in, in a similar situation to what, what happened. And um, most of the time you're finding, you know, I did go to a, a stroke support group um, in Constantia. And... Um, I brought the average age down to 87, okay, because everyone there is a lot older. Mm. And they would get together for an hour and have a cup of tea and they would chat. And for me, that's not support. Okay, you want you want answers. You want to, firstly, you want to speak to somebody who knows what you've been through. So you can share something in common. Okay, you can share your frustration because they understand. Okay, um, and and so that's what the foundation is. One of the the key things the foundation I think that's provides right. is is you want to do these um, free stroke survivor centers all around South Africa, and some of them actually are mobile rehabilitation. Ab absolutely, because centers. That's the one thing. I, 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 the first kind of thing that I've discovered is, without money, you're not going to get rehab. Mm. And without rehab, you're not going to recover. So, and <laughs> I've only got an eighth of a brain now, so I put one and one together and thought, okay, no money means I can't recover. Mm. And sure, that's, I, that Such didn't sit well with me. And I thought, what? that shouldn't be. So I started looking around and um, there was a, a complete lack of support for people without money. Uh, yes, I had a me medical aid, but eventually you run out. Okay? Now, I lost my business. I had no income. How am I going to sustain this? Okay, do I have to rely on my family and my friends to support me? That's not right. So, you c then you start looking offshore and you look at foreign countries. And yes, they have a national um, health system in place. We don't. Hopefully, in the next couple of years, we do. But you know, something needs to be d done now in order and, to. And I want to just acknowledge that you are doing that. You, together with your your co-founder Charlene, 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 I have actually stepped up and created the the Stroke Survivors Foundation, right. specifically for. So I'm, well, I'm just. No, that's fine. You know, um, essentially, we have two main objectives for the yeah. foundation um, the first one and it's probably the easier one to achieve is to create a, a stroke manual or stroke handbook okay um, because when I left hospital after two months <clears throat> I left a very stroke 
friendly environment. And <laughs> I actually lied to my occupational therapist because they said, we need to come and, and inspect your house to see if it's safe for you. And I said, no, it's fine. They said, she asked me, do you have any stairs? I said, no. <laughs> I just moved into a flat on the second floor. <laughs> but there was no, I just wanted out <laughs> of the hospital. Yeah. And so just as a part of, of that manual then is to give you information how to, to and yes. also an, I believe it's also to help <clears throat> the family, the caregivers, the, That's right. everyone else that is around you. Also, you know, um, you look at Charlene, a single mother. Okay. Sure. How does her child have to cope with a mother that's had a stroke? Okay. Mm. <clears throat> we don't know. So that's where um, neurologists come, in, come into the equation. Okay. Give them a bit of background information. Okay. You've got to, that manual has to answer so many questions. Because when I went home, that first night, oh, I'm sure it was a huge yeah, thing. Because now you're excited about being so, home, but now, hang on a second, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have a bell to ring if I need something. So, yeah. So, yeah, so I take hat off. I know that's one of the, the key objectives. I just want to mention the, the book that, that I wanted to talk about tonight. It's um, Lance Armstrong's It's Not About the Bike. Um, for those that I'm sure you think everyone knows, loved Lance Armstrong, who won the Tour de France, but after he had actually survived cancer. All right. So he himself experienced a, a very different trauma, but still one that, that influenced you know, his physical body in, in, in a significant way. Um, one of the things I just want to move on to and talk about is, is the one I want to just read a quote from his book, from what Lance said, because I think his book is a very interesting story of i think just that so people who are experiencing you know cancer can read and, and hear all these different stages you go through and the, the difficulties and the being in hospital and chemo and all that um but he has some really key points i thought was, was so good the one is he talks about the, one of the redeeming things about being an athlete one of the real services we can perform is to redefine what's humanly possible we cause people to reconsider their limits to see what to see that what looks like a wall may really just be an obstacle in the mind. Illness may, <laughs> can't read, illness was not unlike athletic performance in that respect. There is so much we don't know about our human capacity. And I wanted to just bring that in because when I met you, <laughs> when I heard about you, you were walking. And just hearing now, like, like you said, when you, you got home, and, and it's, you know, there's no bell to ring and now you, you're trying to manage your, your new environment. After that, a couple of months later, you, you walked for six months. You walked from Bait Bridge, which is the top of South Africa, all the way down to the, the tip um, to Cape Point, a total of 2,473 kilometers. I mean, I just take my hat off to you. It took you six months. I mean, I think you started in August 2010 and you finished in February this year. Most people after the stroke, I think you, you were saying, it's almost like they, they just can't find a couch. That's what society, what everyone thinks. You can't do anything. You can't move half your body. You just go, go sit there. So why did you choose to go and walk six, for six months? Walk, even though you, you know, you, I think you were you're still limping. Uh, I, and, I and still can't, you can't call it a walk. You if you see the way he walks, it's not a walk. It's right. a limp. That's, That's a, a strut. No, a strut. Yeah, but you, need, you know what? <laughs> Everybody thinks a walk. <laughs> you, you use both feet and you put one in front of the other properly. But yeah, when you're dragging your right foot, it's not a walk. And, and your right hand, you can't and use your right it hand all. Is, um, so I want to know, why did you do that and not just sit on the couch? Uh, <clears throat> it's quite simple. We all have choices. No matter what happens, you've got a choice. So... The choice that I, was, that I had to face was, all right, this is my situation. I accept it, and either I take it lying down and sit on the couch, and that's the rest of my life, or I get on with it, okay? And I suppose my personality, uh, I don't take things lying down. Um, and the choice for me was very... Uh, simple. You get up and deal with it. Okay, no matter what comes your way, you deal with. 
Some yeah. you, some you're going to win, some you're going to lose. So what? Okay, if you don't go out there, you're never going to know. And <clears throat> it stems back to a movie I saw when I was a kid with Clint Eastwood, and some war movie. And there was a phrase, adapt, improvise, and overcome. And that's how I basically mm. got through everything. I had to adapt to my situation. Yes. I had to improvise. So, tying a shoelace, hmm, okay, what do you do? Uh, you've got to find something that can, uh, and I can't remember what the, what the little plastic. Gizmo. Yeah, gizmo. gizmo <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> I found the gizmo to help me tie my shoelaces. Mm. So, I improvised because in the ward, when I was still in hospital, I had to wait for a nurse to come and tie my shoelaces. Come on, you can't do that to a grown man. That's something I learned 35 years ago, and now I can't do that. No, there's no ways I was going to accept that. So you, you, you improvise, and then eventually you overcome. And for me, that's how I live my life. You know, adapt, improvise, and overcome. Because otherwise you just, you're not going to adapt, you're not going to improvise, you're not going to overcome. And then it's fun. So with his his strut, he adapted, improvised, and walked for for six Not a John Travolta strut. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it, part of it for me, and for when I look at it, is is just to, it shows me what is possible. Why why I lead in with with that quote that that the human being, you know, the body is able to adapt and improvise. I mean, you 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 did the walk. That's right. And, and I think it was to show people that there is life after. Exactly that. It's that to mot motivate fellow stroke survivors or, or in fact, any person any with human. a disability or with any battle that they have in life. Mm. Okay. Before I started that walk, I had already overcome that walk in my mind because nothing was going to get in my way and stop me. Okay, maybe a, a bus <laughs> or, or, or a truck. <laughs> Which <laughs> but, didn't happen, thing yeah, is. <laughs> I came close in Cape Town. <laughs> yes, yes. And I had to be there on that day. That's right. Uh, I was with yeah. you on that, that day. I walked for one day with, with George. I was exhausted after. So uh, The point the is, months. you just, your mind is your strongest asset. Okay, if you mm. sort things out in your mind, you can overcome anything. anything. Yes, it's going to be difficult. Yes, it's going to be tough. But you know what? Nowhere is it written that life is fair or easy. So, you know what? Some people, and uh, I used the, the, the analogy early on, Paris Hilton could break a nail, and that's a trauma for her. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? A trauma is a trauma for any person. Mm. doesn't matter the, the, the degree. The Okay, it's how you you overcome it. You overcome it, and and how you come back from that. Yeah. And you have really overcome and come back. Thank you. And and so someone asked the the video that I found was M. Stacy Kramer. It's a TED video, and she's it's entitled "The Best Gift I Ever Survived." And it's a really it's a really nice three three minute clip that just makes you really think about. I mean, she talks about everything she got from this really really small gift. Mm. The, the the feelings of, of being you know valued by your family and getting closer with your family and you know relationships change. Oh, I can't think I can remember right now. She, anyway, she lists a whole lot of of things that she got from from her gift, even though it was packaged in in such a horrible way as a as a brain tumor, and she survived. So it's it's worth going. But what? How has it helped you? You know, because I think she her whole message is that. It's a gift that you would never want for anyone else. And yet sometimes when we do face those traumas, there actually is so much that can come out of it, especially if you, I think, just you know, embrace it in, in the best way you can, you, like you have. You have to. You, you've always got to look at the positive. You know, for me, I found a, a way of moving all my stuff in my house by getting your friends to do it. <laughs> you just have a stroke. <laughs> uh, uh, joking, but you've got to turn your negatives into positive. Okay. Um, yeah, 
I, I can't say anything more than that. Well, we're too conditioned comments? by the way we live. Everything we do, everything's inside of a box. Yeah. Because we've got routines and we do routines all the time. And if you can change your routines, you change a little bit of the way you live. And when you get obstacles like these, like he says, either you survive or you don't. And 99.9% .9 of the people are going to do something about it. Now, if you've got the support system behind you, I think you'll, you'll go further than what somebody who hasn't. Hasn't, yeah. And by creating the support system that he wants to do, he's going to help a lot of people. Yeah, through the foundation. Because if, as a family, we didn't know, even afterwards, we didn't know. You know, we got there, we was lying in the, in the bed, and he couldn't move. Um, six days later, he had a physiotherapist, and he started walking. He did 15 steps. You know, she'd take the wheelchair away from him and said, right, come towards me. Now, from seeing him lying in the bed, not being able to move, to six days later, him getting out of bed and doing 10, 12, 15 steps, and every day increasing that. Until, you know, it's a willpower, and it's, it's something that you want to do. Yeah, until you got to the stage and where, where he, he walks. He did 2,500 kilometers. 2,500 yeah. kilometers. Without a wheelchair. Without you know? a wheelchair. Yeah. And it did take him six months, but, but he did yeah. it. So. I read a, a, for, um, a saying that really appealed to me. And uh, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. That's true. Mm. Why? Because all of a sudden, you've got to start thinking outside the box. How do I deal with this? And for me, that's where, you know, that's where you start to look for answers, to look f of, of, of ways to do things differently. Okay? What might work for me might not work for somebody else. But, Go and find your own solution. Okay, there's no, it's not a science. Okay, this, uh, like I said in the beginning, I've played sport, I've ridden motorbikes. So uh, I've broken a few bones. And the brain was always there to help you deal with how to heal. Yes. And now it's in reverse. Now your brain is taken out. Okay, so think about it as a computer. Your, hard, your, your, your CPU is eliminated. How does a computer teach the brain what's going on? Because you know, it's, it's a totally rewiring a, of it. Absolutely. And, and what is amazing for me is the possibility within the brain that other areas of the brain are able to adapt and to That's help it. with the rewiring. And, That's it. And because now you know, the, the brain gets a message. And it says, sorry, where are you coming from? I don't know where you – and the thumb has to say, okay, listen, I'm a thumb, okay, and this is what I'm supposed to do. And the brain says, ah, sorry, don't have that on record. So, so yeah, it's, it's total well, – You've got to read from the One of the other things that, that Lance Armstrong says, and I'm just going to shorten the, the quote um, – we have unrealized capacities that sometimes only emerge in a crisis. So if there is a purpose to the suffering that is cancer, I think it must be this. It's meant to improve us. And then, George, I just think that, that you are such an inspiring example to, to us about really what is, what is within us. As you say, now, that, that spirit of not giving up, that spirit of like not believing the limitations that other people may have put on you. Or well, maybe I've just had the opportunity to prove that to myself. Whereas other people haven't. Haven't. Maybe it's just that. Because, you know what, I haven't done anything that's so amazing. What have I done? I've just, I've survived. I've done what, uh, whatever it takes for me to survive. Mm. So I haven't done anything amazing. For most things everyone, you've done, you've done a bit more because people are surviving and they're sitting on the couch. You, you're going that next step, and I think it's very courageous of you. You're sharing your story. You, I mean, here tonight, you walked two th over 2,000 kilometers. You've started a foundation. You're writing the manual to, to help the families and, and the people out there, and, and you're raising funds to make the, you know, the rehab available for people who, who don't have, have the funds. But it will always boil down to the individual. Yes. Okay. And you know what? Everyone's got it within them. Everyone's got it within them. So totally. you just got to find that button to press to kick you into action. It's, it's a boils down to decision. And I know Jack, 
Jack was said to me if I was it that sometimes life gives you little like feathers. She's like, hey, there's the button here. Wake up. There's the button here. And when you don't notice those feathers, it sometimes then throws a brick at you. So I, I thought it was a lo- lovely analogy. And and sometimes, yeah, it's hopefully most people listening to this will, will just look for those feathers and not wait for a trauma to, to find that button within them because it's a bit. I, I think it's, it's – you've got to ask the question. Okay, and that, I think that's pretty much the, the easy part. Now, any person, okay, whatever you want to do, okay, ask yourself the question. But the catch is to answer it honestly. Okay, because then if, if you don't, you're lying to yourself. So how many times have we heard that you can be whatever you want to be? And that's absolutely correct. It but is. it's just having the courage to answer the question honestly. honestly. Okay. Am I going to go to the moon? No. Do I want to? No. So that's why I won't. But if you know, somebody says to me, hey, you want to walk up Kilimanjaro? I'll think about it and say, you know what? That would be a very cool adventure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, I'm in. Okay. And then I know what I want to do. I know... I have an idea of what goes into that. Well, then I better get myself into gear and prepare myself for that. For that. And what was your, your quote again? Adapt, Adapt improvise. Adapt, improvise, and overcome. And then overcome and climb up that Kilimanjaro. There we go. Yes, I'm so, not, I, I won't be the first or the fastest. But that's so not what? Important. It's not important. It's, it's that you have that, that experience. So if anyone would like to get hold of you, I know they can go to the Stroke Survivors Foundation, which is strokesurvivors.org.za. Yeah. That's right. They can also find you on Twitter, Stroke Survivors, and but, also on Facebook. Yes. And then um, for, for if there are Stroke Survivors listening to this, if they want to speak to us and speak to a Stroke Survivor and share frustrations or stories or whatever, and We've find got, out what's yeah, going on. And um, we do have a line, which is zero eight two double eight nine one eight hundred. It's on our website, and uh, obviously on Facebook as well. Yeah. So and, and obviously also the families, the, the support that's system important. around the families can need also to get contact. Involved. Yes, and there'll be information on on your website and ways they can contribute to help you get that book out there and. And it was, you know all the other work that you're doing around helping. <laughs> um, w- one of the first things that amazed me when I when I looked into the foundation and is that a database does not exist in South Africa of stroke survivors. Now, if if people, let me just give you a bit of a background into sure. into. We need to start wrapping up, so we can to. Sorry, I'll be give quick. Me a quick. Um, there are 240 strokes a day in South Africa. Sure. Okay. A lot there. 25% recover fully. 25% d- die. Okay. okay. The remaining 50% are left disabled. Okay. Sure. That's 120 people a day in South Africa only. Now, 25% of those are economically active. Okay, so that's me. Now, you take the breadwinner out of a family. Okay, a think impact. of the pressure on the, on the family. Mm. Okay. Um, from those 120 people, how many are going to give up? We don't know. How many of those are registered, or not registered, but do we know about? Okay, now, in, in, in the black um, culture, they are seen as bewitched. So the first thing they're going to do is they're going to hide them away. So what's going to happen to them? They're going to end up sitting at home watching TV. On the couch, as we were Now, saying. that's a waste of a life. Okay, and they can recover. Yeah. So, for me, it's too many people wasting away. And I think that's I think part of your your 
six month war because you started collecting, you know, we started populating, populating the database. And so we've got some numbers. Okay. You can do, yeah, absolutely. Know the situation more. You got to, we've, we've got to create that awareness that these people do exist. And I think it's, it's part of education, which is what you're trying to do. The awareness and education leads back to is, is the whole topic of the show about possibility to show people that it is possible to have it a different life, even with it. And I think that that's, that's what we're saying. Even with a physical challenge of some whatever sort, because it, it comes in so many ways for so many people, anything still is possible if you to that switch on. If you're honest with yourself, as you were saying, you, awesome. you decide be, what it is you want to do, and then you look to eliminate the obstacles or you improvise. Find a way for you that, that would take you forward. Find a way around the wall. Find your way around the wall. Survival. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting, just to end off then, um, one of the other quotes that I really, that Lyon said, it's, he's a very firm in his belief that cancer is not a form of death. He says he chooses to redefine it. It's a part of life. That's true. And it's very much that. I think that we come here with this body, and whatever happens to it, it's still a part of our life, and it's, it's here for this this journey so I want to thank you so much for coming and, and sharing your story and thank you the possibilities that are out there <laughs> and just I salute you George for your for doing that walk for, for stepping up and showing the courage that you continually show to improvise and step across around that wall and thank you too for your support you're welcome and, and thank you for thank you very much We'd love for you to carry on the conversation with us. You can ask, you know, more questions on our Facebook page. I'm sure George will, will contribute there. Um, others tweet us. Um, it's LT Possibility. You can obviously find us on Facebook and our blog, ltp.letstalknetwork.tv. Yeah, so thanks so much, guys, for coming in. And we will see you in two weeks' time again on Monday the 31st. Let's Talk Sports is coming up. I know there's lots happening with the World Cup and the <laughs> final. <laughs> so it's an interesting week. And we'll see you on the flip side. Stay soon. Thank you. Great. Thanks cheers. for coming in. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.
Pirina.